Hello, welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be covering psql, the command utility called psql that is utilized for Postgres, its basic syntax and usage. That said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is authenticate with a proper user. In a previous video, we've covered how to change a password for the recently installed Postgres and its user account. So to that effect, I'm going to type in su minus Postgres, which will authenticate and log me in under that account. So I get prompted my password and I am connected. I can verify right now with who am I to determine and confirm my account name. And that is correct. Okay, so now that I'm there, if I type in psql, I should be automatically logged into psql with all the defaults. That is also correct and it worked properly. But what we want to find out are the syntax and the basics of everything that psql can provide via the command line. So let's exit here and type in psql minus help. We're going to get a few commands listed in options. Each section varies and has its own different purpose. In the generic general options, you can see that we have the command, which this can be used to run a SQL statement without having to log in and go through the process of the terminal within psql. We're going to do a quick demo of it. The same with the database name. You can, uh, by default, as mentioned here, you can access Postgres. That does not mean you can't change via the command line into a data, different database. Minus F will allow us to run the contents of a file, in this case, a SQL file, and all the SQL statements with it. This parameter minus L will allow us to automatically list the available databases in. And we can keep on going more and more down here. We can see the version. It'll list the version for us. More commands, single transactions. We have the section for input and output options, echoing, logs, output format options, which come in handy whenever you want to handle more data and view it in separate ways, or even use some hacking into it to just get some specific date details about it. And last but not least, this is the section that we will be using. Most Postgres admins or users will be leveraging most of the time. The host name, the port, the username, and passwords. Most of the time, these are the three ones along with the database. So let's get started and try that. I'm going to connect to my local host. And notice that even though it's local host, this means it's on my current box, but that could be an IP address. I can state the port, which by default is 5432. I have not changed from it, so it should work automatically. And I'm going to log in as my Postgres user, which is which currently I am currently authenticated as. I type it in, I get prompted for the password in, I'm into the terminal. Great. Let's list the databases available. And now let's cross check if that could work for us with that command parameter minus L. We get again prompted for the password and notice it will list it successfully. Okay, what happens if you want to assume and connect directly into the NW database? Let's go ahead and test that. We prompt in and we were connected to it, but we forgot to list and remove this list command. So now we connect directly to the psql and we can test to see which tables are available. Let's list the content from students. We know that there is content and we can verify this by running it on the command line with a command and type in select from students. And we should get the command with a data back. These are just a few quick demos here of the possibilities that you can utilize psql in the command line. I encourage you to look in greater details of looking into its commands, parameters, and syntax itself. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.